Hello, YouTube. It's Barbara Jean. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> okay. This dream I had this morning was a spiritual battle. It was a very interesting dream. I think I'm going to start out with reading some scripture first. Uh, start with um, 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15, starting at verse 55. Okay. Actually, let's start with, um, let's, let's just, let's do this instead. Uh, let's start at verse 50. Fifty-one of chapter 15 of first Corinthians behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corrupt corruption must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always unbounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I want to read Hosea. Chapter 13, starting at verse 9. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but is it, it is me in, it, but in me is thine help. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? And thy judge, <clears throat> judges of whom thou sayest, give me a king and a prince, priest, a king and prince, princes. I give thee a king in mine anger, and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up; his sin is hid. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall call up, come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. I will ransom, ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. <clears throat> and then I'm going to read Acts. Chapter 1, starting at verse 7. <clears throat> mm, that's not right. That's not right. Why did I write that down? Hmm. That's not right. I don't know why I put that down. Anyway, say Levy. Okay, let's read those two verses. Oh, I, I see what I did. Okay, let me try that again. Luke. <laughs> I was looking at the one I did last time, my last video. Let me just go to Luke. Luke chapter 4, uh, starting at verse 16. Uh, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he entered, and his customs was. So Jesus has entered the, the synagogue before his um, his um, his actual ministry began, and he, this is how he started his ministry. Um, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he entered, and as, as his custom was, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up. <clears throat> And, and excuse me, stood up to read. 
And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and he opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He hath set, sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty, liberty them that are bruised, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began to say unto them, Today hath this scripture, scripture been fulfilled in thy ears. Okay, that's what I wanted to read. Okay, now, the dream. <clears throat> Sorry, it's taking me so long just to focus here. But um, anyway, the dream I had this morning was um, I was under the anointing. I was sitting in my chair under the anointing. And I saw this place. I was actually asleep. Um, I was in a, it looked like I was someplace on earth, some kind of desert community. Now, I don't know why I thought it was at that point, but I went into this building, our house. It looked like a house. And I was trying to be invisible. I didn't want to be seen by anybody who was in this house. Um, and it was inside the house, it was dark, it looked disgusting, it was covered in black, and, um, it looked like, um, <laughs> it looked like, you know, ever you been in one of those, uh, amusement park, rides where it's a haunted house and you get in one of these carts and you you go into this place that's all covered in creepy things and that's what it looked like that's what it reminded me of I was like when I entered this house in invisibility I was observing what was in this house and it was full of death it was satanic it was dark it was ugly it was gross um it was evil and, uh, and I was observing, and I don't rem remember a lot of, well, um, let's put it this way. The memory of all the things that I was observing does not come to my mind, but I was observing different things. And I didn't see a lot of people in this house, but I knew it was, it was full of evil. Uh, I was ready to leave. I didn't want to stay there. I, I was ready to get out. Um, but I was trying, when I was leaving this house, um, there was, the Grim Reaper was in the doorway of this house. And he was very tall and thin. Uh, what was interesting, I didn't, I felt on some, some level that this was an actual place. This is this is what's confusing me to me about this dream. It felt like it was an actual place that I was in. Like I was in the spirit in some place on this earth. Um, to me, it could have been Nevada, Arizona. Um, could have been in Israel. I don't know. It was somewhere, someplace arid. I could see outside the door because I was trying to leave. Desert mountains basically in the distance. But this grim reaper was standing in the doorway of this house. And now, now I'm not really sure whether he knew I was there or I had become visible to him. Whether he was an actual man or a spirit, I don't know. Uh, whether he was just a representation of something or where he was, like I said, an actual person. In some way, I felt he was an actual person, strangely enough. I felt he was an actual person dressed like this. I didn't feel he was so much a spirit. But anyway, like I said, this was the confusing part of the, this whole dream vision that I had. While I was standing there, my only thoughts was, I'm going to kill you. How can I kill you? And I wasn't feeling any remorse, any regrets, any fear. All I thought was, I'm going to get you. What can I do? To, how can I do you in? So I looked around. I found something that looked like a man's tie, like one of those neckties. 
And I took this necktie and I tied it around the neck of the, of death of this grim green reaper. And I pulled and pulled and pulled until it died. This being, whether it was real hu a real human person dressed like the grim reaper or a spirit, I don't know. But I had no regrets. I didn't feel any fear. I felt very powerful. I didn't feel the least bit afraid of this thing. And I pulled until it died and it fell to the floor. And I, like I said, had no remorse whatsoever. Had no, why should I? It was thing, the thing was just pure, pure evil. And so what it was. And I, like I said, that's it. That's it for you. So I left the house in my vision, okay, in the vision I left. I, that's when I really saw that I was in some kind of arid landscape. And I was, in, in real life, as I was sitting in my chair under the anointing, I was trying to wake up. At that point, I was trying to wake up from the vision. And I could feel myself coming to, if you will. But the Lord wouldn't let me. It's like he stopped me and said, no, not yet. And so I went back deep into this, into this vision and I closed my eyes and, and again I fell under this vision. And what I saw next was these women coming out of this house. Someone was leading them out of the house. There was a group of women in this house that I didn't know was there. Um, there was, it was not a huge group, of maybe a few, uh, maybe half a dozen, maybe to ten women. I, could, I didn't count them. But they were being led out of this house and they were under bondage. They had their hands behind their backs and they were tied. And they were tied behind their backs, bound. And I felt in my spirit that these women were being uh, prepared or waiting for sacrifice. They were being, uh, they were going to be ritualistically killed in this house. And as I was in this vision, I had a knife in my hand. Suddenly I had a knife in my hand. And these women were brought out of this house. And I began, took this knife, and I grabbed their hands, and I began to loose their hands from their bonds. I didn't loose all of them. There were about three of them that I cut their ties to They cut uh, with this knife so that they were set free. Um, then that's when I was allowed to wake up from the vision. Now, I don't know whether that was a, like I said, a, just a symbolic battle, a, like our spiritual battle that I was facing or going through. I was a, of some, it was a battle of some sort. I was battling something on some level, whether it was just spiritual or an actual physical battle. Um, like there was some place in this world, in the United States, Israel, somewhere where women are being kept, were kept in this place and that God was using me to set them free. But on a spiritual level, the interpretation of it could very well be, and interestingly be, the church being set free from the bondage of death. Um, you know, that we were waiting for the return of Christ Jesus and that he, the final battle is with death itself and that we will be changed incorruptible and then that we will not die, we will not see death. Um, uh, the, the, that faith is the victory that overcomes the world, that our faith um, has finally overcome the very, the very last um, foe, which is death itself. The church, the bride, has done battle and put to death, death. Death, where is thy sting? There is no victory in death. Death has lost its power. Um, that could be very well the spiritual, ba uh, spiritual battle that was in this... Uh, vision that I saw and um, that the bride is setting free the captives with this knife, which is the sort of truth. We're being, we're setting people free. We're setting the captives free. Um, that could very well be the spiritual implications. Um, or it could be even an implication of Israel being held captive by death. Uh, as we know that Israel has been uh, put it under bondage itself, and it's still under bondage of its enemies. And perhaps that this was the Lord showing that the church is going to set the, the captives of Israel free from its bonds. I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to you to really uh, decide what you feel the dream means. But in my interpretation, like I said, I don't know whether it was an actual place 
um, actual people being set free and I having to do battle with the spirit that was holding these women in uh, bondage or whether it was um, a spiritual battle uh, on the, on just on a spiritual level. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> I will talk to you all later. God bless.